I'm from Catkin and Pussy Willow florist and we are just going to show you how to make a lovely hand tied spring bouquet. Um, just apologies for any trains that go past, um, it's a little bit noisy, they're still running at the moment, um, so just apologies if they're a bit loud. Um, but if we get started I will show you the flowers that we're going to use today. Um, so we're going to start off with our focal flowers which are these white avalanche roses. We have also got some ranunculus here and tulips as well. Now these are one of my favourites, these are anemones. We've also got scabious um, and allium here. Then onto our secondary flowers. So these are Winston Churchill Narcissi. We've got an Ami. Sweet pea here, which is a lovely deep purple. Some clematis. And then for our filler flowers, we have got this is Tanacetum. And another one of my favourites is Butterfly Ranunculus. Um, these are really good because they sort of bounce over the top of the bouquets and you can split them down into three or four stems. Then for our line flowers, which are the tall flowers in the bouquet, we've got Oxypetalum, which is also known as Tweedia, and some Delphiniums, and these Volcafroidan variety. For our foliage, I've got some Alcamilla. This is really common, um, you find it in a lot of cottage gardens. Got some flowering viburnum as well. Some long stem parvi, which is really good. You can split that down into quite a few branches. Some cinerea and some nikolai as well. So to start off, we need to strip some of the stems because um, if these were to sit in water, they go mouldy, um, it would poison the water and um, the flower, it's just not very good for the flowers. And sort of strip to sort of two thirds of the way down. And same with the tanacetum, you just want to just take that one off. Ooh, put a little broken stem. I'm just gonna split off the ranunculus. So it's good just to have all your stems prepped at the beginning of your bouquet so that you're not trying to sort of do this all one-handed. Um, foliage as well, cut down. And again, just strip the bottom two leaves off. You also want to make sure that you cut off any sort of stems like that because you don't want that showing through the bouquet. You just want to trim it down and it hides it. And what we also use in a lot of our bouquets is, um, this is called Salau, it comes with quite a few leaves on it and we use it just to um, protect the stems in a bouquet, um, so we don't, it's sort of hidden, we use it quite low down and we just strip it so it's got sort of two or three leaves on it and then in the bouquet we use it just in front of the stems like this and it just wraps around and protects them. It also sort of helps bulk out the bouquets as well. I'm going to start with my focal flower, my rose. I'm just going to put some salal around the outside, so with the leaves facing outwards. Um, and then what I tend to do is do sort of flower foliage, flower foliage, and sort of work in that way. Um, and to spiral, you want to put everything in in the same direction. So you put one stem in like that at an angle and then you twist and the more and more you keep doing that you end up with a big spiral at the bottom and it just helps support all of your stems and keeps everything together. I might just pop a couple of bits in. Use 
and Nikolai. And then you want to have your type, this is gonna be quite a big bouquet, um, so it might sort of come out to about here. Um, so I'm having my tie point quite low. Um, so if you had it up really high like that, it would just squish everything together. So you want to have a bit of freedom because these roses are gonna open up more and they will need space to do that. And then some more Salal. I'm gonna use this bit of viburnum here because it's quite chunky. So it can just help give some structure. And then a twist. I'm going to put in my ranuncula. That's my next flower. And twist. And then I might go in with a filler flower nest. So use some of my ranuncula. Twist. And then some more foliage. So we tend to use sort of three or four different varieties of foliage in our bouquets just to add different textures and colours. Um, as you can see the Nikolai is sort of really nice and um, sort of floaty in, in the bouquets. And add Narcissi. And just make sure that each time you put another stem in, it needs to go in at this angle, at the same angle. Um, so then you start getting your spiral there. And then twist. Put some panacetum in. Some clematis just to add a bit of height. So I'm going to start adding a bit of height now and just pop in my delphinium. twisting, popping in the flowers. So our style tends to be quite loose and a bit more wild, um, sort of making sure every single flower in the bouquet has got its own space to grow and to shine. And you also don't want to put too many sort of flowers of the same colour together, like all the whites there, you don't really want to group them, because um, it just sort of stands out a lot in the bouquet. Some scabious going in. And you can also adjust things in the bouquet, see where my rose has slipped. You can just pop it back up again. And keep popping in some salal as well, just to support those slightly weaker stems, like the tulips and the narcissi. And then you can also, where your spiral is, um, you can put stems 
into your bouquet, you don't have to sort of keep going around the outside. It's just whether you'll follow the same line, you can just slide it in like that. see now my spiral is nice and tight around where my fingers are and it all sort of comes out at the bottom so all the stems are nice and supported in there but also have enough space I'm nearly done now just popping in the last few stems You don't have to use all the foliage as well. Um, you can just, yeah, you don't have to put it all in. So I'm probably going to leave a lot of this out. one now I think pop him in here and then you just want to fill around the outsides with your foliage you see here we've got exposed stems just want to pop some foliage around them just to make sure all the stems are nice and supported like. I'm just going to tie it off now with some string. And you want to tie the string around maybe three or four times, not too tight so that it suffocates the stems, but tight enough so that it's not all going to collapse when you let go. So just wrap it round and you want to wrap it round where your hand is for your tie point. Knot it a few times. And then just clean off any excess leaves that you've got on the bottom so they don't go in the water. And then at this point you can then adjust some stems in the bouquet. So you pull them up or down. And then I'm probably going to cut them to about here because that's sort of where the average length of my stems are. And a sign of a good spiral. Oh, and the stems also need to be cut at a slight angle. Um, because where they're at an angle they've got more surface area for the stems to um, suck up water. So you want nice clean sharp cuts. And here we go, here's the finished bouquet um, and the sign of a good bouquet is that it should stand like this. Hopefully if you've got a strong spiral um, with evenly spread weight it should stand nicely and now it's ready to go in a vase. Thanks for watching.